Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat, episode 249, featuring a review of the game Mount and Blade Warband. This is a really fun game that blends elements from role-playing games and action games and strategy games into a package that I think is really better than the sum of its parts. Anyway, we've got a lot to cover, so without further ado, here is Mount and Blade Warband. And here we go with a little game called Mount and Blade Warband. This was uh, published by this Paradox Interactive company, but it was uh, developed by Tell Worlds Entertainment, which I was interested to, to learn is actually from Turkey. Uh, these guys have been around for a while. They did the first uh, Mountain Blade game back in 2005, and this is the sequel to that. By all accounts, at least from the friends of mine that play this series avidly, and some of them play it very avidly indeed, uh, say this is the best one, the one to start with at least, so I took their advice. Kind of helped that somebody gifted it to me on Steam. Thank you, Mad Merv, for that. So, it was designed by a fellow by the name of Amergen Yavuz. At least that's his <laughs> what we're going to go with. He's a pretty interesting guy. I was reading some interviews from him. He's, uh, he says that he was inspired by Darklands, The Elder Scrolls, Daggerfall, Elite, and uh, some game called Genghis Khan. And he said he wanted to go for a sword fighting game that felt like you were using your reflexes. And uh, of course they wanted to have the mount, the mount, mounted aspect of it. Something noticeably lacking in a lot of uh, these sorts of games. Alright, so the beginning of the game we have to create a character and as you can see it's very... I'd call this Ultima-like. Some of those Ultima games where you have to answer a series of questions instead of just rolling dice and picking uh, stats and so on. I think this was also used in the Traveler role-playing game system. But it does a good job right away. You're thinking about the background of your character. Where does he come from? And at first these questions might seem to have a uh, little relevance, but you actually be surprised how much relevance they have. Uh, in particular, the fact that you come from noble background, noble stock. If you play as a common person, you're going to have a lot of trouble. And as the little message said earlier, if you play as a female, you'll also face a lot of sexism. Or at least uh, you'll have a harder time becoming king, or I guess queen in that case. Okay, we get to pick a banner, and there's lots of great banners here. Uh, you'll be looking at this quite a lot, so you want to put a little thought. You want to just click the first thing you see, you know. Uh, I click through, see if you... Oh, uh, what? Well, hey. <laughs> That's pretty cool they actually had that. Wow. Okay, realistic, no quitting. Oh, f believe me, man, unless you are just a glutton for punishment, you don't want to make this game any harder than it is already. Uh, so you might not even... Uh, I guess if you just you want to just uh, go in really hardcore, uh, you can do that uh, option not to save or not to let you quit without saving, but uh, phew, I just can't imagine that. I mean, I was, I've already screamed so many curse words at this game, it's not even funny. And that's on, like, 33% difficulty level. <laughs> okay, lots of stats. And again, uh, unless you read the manual for this, if you just go in blind, you can easily screw up pretty bad. Uh, basically, you've got... The attributes are pretty much what you'd expect. Uh, you know, they do what you would expect. Agility in this game is going to be important for just about every character, though. Because that's uh, that dictates your writing ability. So if, it's, if that's too low, you won't be able to ride very well and you'll have uh, be stuck with crappy horses. Probably don't want that. Strength is important. Uh, strength is important for the melee weapons, but also dictates uh, how big of a bow you can use or how, you know, the strength of the bow you can use. So pretty much all of these stats are important. And charisma is, is really important because uh, that controls your leadership. And if you're the lower your leadership score is or the higher that it is, controls how big of an army you can have. So, you know, I kind of, I don't know how to say it other than that. Pretty much everything is important. Uh, you want to work on all the stuff. Now, some of these uh, skills are more useful than others, depending on your play style. Like, do you want to throw axes and javelins and spears, or do you want to work with a bow? Uh, there are crossbows in the game that don't require any of the, any special skills to use. Unfortunately, they take a long time to wind up. 
Uh, so if you want to you imagine yourself Genghis Khan style, riding the back of a horse and firing off uh, dozens of arrows, you want to pump some uh, skill points into power draw. Otherwise, you just use a crossbow. Uh, athletics, that's running. That's very important. The proficiencies are, are less important. You'll level those up as you use your weapon. I actually like to use those points when I when I level up. I put the proficiencies into uh, <laughs> into stuff I don't use because if you do a tournament, as you'll see, you don't necessarily know. You might not get be using your familiar weapon, and uh, so I think it's a good idea to have a little proficiency in everything, kind of work on everything. Okay, I also have this extremely detailed character creation thing. I mean, I guess if you spend enough time with this, you could make yourself look like anybody. A little dip here, a little tuck there. Next thing you know, you're feeling like Pamela Anderson. I like these mustaches. Yeah, the, it's, there's a lot of importance attached to good facial hair. Yeah, I was just listening to a podcast about the role of hair styles in the, in the Dark Ages. Pretty interesting stuff. A lot of political significance attached to uh, your length of your hair and the degree of uh, facial hair that you have. Length of your beard and so on. That was pretty cool. Uh, this guy's looking pretty good. I think he's worthy of, uh, of being controlled by me. Alright. Done and done. Okay, now we get a choice of our starting zones. You're going to be this sort of foreigner traveling in one of these different kingdoms. The first one there, the Pravens, seem to be the most typical, what you'd expect from a middle age, you know, European style. Got the armored knights. Uh, the other ones are, I guess you've got sort of the Norsemen, cold. Uh, the, no uh, let's see, which one? No uh, Rodox. They seem to be really proficient with crossbows. At least they could kick my butt with that. I imagine most people want to play as the, uh, the Swadians, at least on the first, first go around, though. Okay, we have a little story here, and you see, it seemed. At least every time I played this game, I got the same basic storyline. Uh, somebody's attacking me. And even though I specialized in different kinds of weapons, I got the crossbow and the sword. So the way I'm controlling, uh, you switch weapons with the mouse wheel, and you can make your shield go up and down. Okay, whoa! See, what I'm, see how long it takes you to do that crossbow? And you have to be still while you do it, you can't be running around. There we go, a nice little swipe. So the really the combat is really cool in this game. If you like if you like this game, it's because you like the way they did the combat. I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Alright, so here's this merchant. As you can see, he's got a little story for us. A little way to integrate us into the game play. He's gonna give us our starting money, so we can start to hire some troops for our budding army. Now if you want, you can play this game. More or less is a straight-up traditional role-playing game. You can find quests, go on missions, uh, do it sort of uh, Grand Theft Auto style with all the different lords and factions you can play for or against each other. Or you can strike off on your own and try to make yourself the king of the realm, which is, of course, <laughs> I guess what everybody wants to do eventually. If you, Unless you're playing on the super easy mode, though, you probably will have to uh, play the game for a while until you... Until you're powerful enough to have an army capable of holding and defending a castle or a town, and that's gonna that's gonna be quite a while unless you are just uh, <laughs> amazing at combat. All right, so all we have to do is starting off here is run off, run off and gather some uh, men for our army. So let's do that. And you know you can explore these little huts and houses and things, but that's you know, don't get too excited about that. There's usually not much to see. Well, you guys coming from Skyrim will probably be like, Oh man, why can't I get the cups and the potatoes and the, and the rutabagas? Well, it's not that kind of game. Alright, we're at the village of Asgad. Asgad. Well, that's a terrible village. Uh, Count Montuor of the Kingdom of Swadia is the lord of this realm. Okay, recruited me a couple of peasant boys, these young strapping farm lads who are apparently tired of tilling and ready for killing my kind of lads uh, this village elder here uh, he's a, basically the quest giver you can ask him about how the village is doing uh, sometimes they'll give you missions you know go get some grain for him or go rustle up some cows what's this then eh 
Ah, looters! <laughs> oh, three troops for battle against their seven. Oh, here we go. You know, this game is not a hand holder. Definitely not a hand holder. You're gonna be challenged right from the get go. I mean, it's quite possible to die even in that first little battle. Though it is quite sad if you let that guy kill you, but, uh, it didn't happen to me, no. no of course not. No, a horse is great on level f level ground. You really get up a good run and do all kinds of speed enhanced damage. Unfortunately, if you look around, you'll notice I am not in a level playing field. In fact, this area is quite hilly. And the horse goes really, really slowly up the hills. So that's not, not, not to be my advantage. And the other big problem I'm having here is I don't have my trusty lance yet. If you're on a horse, you want a lance, for reasons I'll show you in a second. But sword is okay, I guess. You also get a speed boost. So you can just stay still and let them come to you and try to hack them down, but you're going to do a lot less damage that way. you notice you do more damage if you get a bit of a, a run on the horse and then s swipe at him as you go by. See that speed bonus there is actually quite significant. Now these guys are pretty weak, pretty wimpy. I mean, talking about armor, this guy didn't even have a shirt on. <laughs> you know, if you're going up in uh, in melee combat against guys with swords and axes and spears, you don't want to be on the skins team. I just think I should let you know that. All right, we've uh, defeated these guys. We have a prisoner. Now, you notice I took that point in prison manage prisoner management. I actually made quite a bit of money that way. And uh, I think it's definitely worth having at least one point in it. As far as I can tell, the prisoners don't eat. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about feeding them. I could be wrong about that. At least uh, I did feed mine. Alright, there we go. Even got some stones. Can throw some rocks. Let's kind of turn off this uh, steam thing. So. There's nothing worse than mowing down armies of guys with sword blows to the head and being covered in their blood and gore. And then a little message pop up that your friend is playing Sparkle Pony. Okay, here we are at the town of Praven. Now, there's lots of things you can do in these towns. Uh, you can meet people in the taverns. You can usually hire some kind of mercenary troops. You can hire heroes that are very important. Uh, they bring skills to the table. Your character can't do it all. At least I don't think so. You can also do these tournaments. Now, this tournament will give you a chance to see what the what the lance combat is all about. So if you're on the... If you got this lance on your own horseback, you don't want to necessarily keep clicking the button. If you just get enough speed going, the lance will go down on its own. I'm not doing that. It's actually doing that itself. It's called the couched position of the lance. And then uh, once you get that going, you just ram it into the person or their horse, and it does exponentially more damage. If you have to, you can try to just click the kind of jab at them with the lance, but... <laughs> it's not very effective. Okay. Now here's where it starts to get interesting. So they're going to start chasing me. And I just started the game, so my riding skill is pretty weak. So I have a hard time maneuvering. You know, turning around fast enough. And you got to watch all these other obstacles, like that horse. See, there's the jab. It's very easy to get excited with these tournaments. Because the stakes get higher and higher the further up you go. That <laughs> couldn't have felt good. <laughs> okay, I got a couple more rounds of this. And you keep uh, up in the bets as you go along, too. It's a good way to get cash. Get some reputation as well. You know, I couldn't help but think about that old cinema weird game, Defender of the Crown. This is probably what they had in mind. Oh, see, I took the horse. I always, you know, they, they tell you, some of the guides I looked at actually recommend you try to kill all the horses first. But I just, I don't know what it is. I feel terrible killing these horses. I, I'd much rather kill the people. I mean, the horse, <laughs> the horse didn't ask to be there. Okay, this is where it's going to start to get interesting. Got three of them. Love them the detail. I, I bet you this is even kind of fun to watch, right? Uh, if you like uh, going to Renaissance fairs and watching the jousting. It's about as close of, uh, as any game I've ever played as in terms of putting you inside that jousting experience. Let's see. Okay. Now the trick is going to be if I can 
get around quick enough. Some of the horses have charging damage, but it's usually pretty pathetic. Let's see, this will be very tricky indeed. Maybe I can take this guy. Oh! Got him! Okay. <laughs> well, this guy's not coward not cowardly, I'll give him that. Okay. Can we get him? Can we get him? Oh he blocked me. Now just because a guy's running around on foot doesn't mean he can't hurt you. He can actually get that lance. Or get the spear especially the guys with poles and spears. Now they can do quite a bit of damage to you. You can actually run into them the wrong way and take just as much damage. Use the speed of your horse against you, the momentum against you. So pretty cool. They really did a good job, I think, taking the physics of the situation into consideration. You know, it feels realistic the way they've done this. And the AI, the AI is not bad here. There's a couple of instances where it's pretty bad. Of course, uh, it could be because I turned it down. <laughs> <laughs> to, like, make everybody so bad. Okay, where'd he go? You know, there's no worse feeling than there's a guy <laughs> with a long metal shaft coming at you at 60 miles an hour, and you don't see him. Uh, I took out his horse. Poor little horsey. Okay, now begins the war of rotation. Can I rotate fast enough? to spin around and still get my lance up. Man, I don't know what this is like to watch, but when you're playing this, it is unreal, man. You're like sweaty palms, your heart's beating at a hundred miles per hour. Okay, yeah, see. <laughs> Metaf you know, the words uh, fail me here. Uh, metaphors fail me too. But it's exciting stuff. I mean, you, you really get invested in this. And like I say, especially with these high stakes deals. I mean, if I lose this tournament, I'm pretty much screwed because I bet all that money. <laughs> it was that merchant's money to hire <laughs> to hire the army to take to find his brother. Oh, come on! This is agonizing. <laughs> uh, one little trick is if you get up next to the walls and stay there for a second, some, sometimes they'll get hung up there for a, not, not long, but they'll get hung up just long enough for you to get some speed, spin around, and, and kill them. All right, here we go. Let's see if I can keep this going. Okay, I think I'll... <laughs> I think I'll see if I can do the little wall trick on this guy, maybe. Is that a girl? Sometimes you do fight women. Okay, so if you get right next to the wall, maybe he'll get stuck. Yeah, it takes him a little bit longer than it did me to get out of that. No. <laughs> He's like, yeah, that, that lame trick's not going to work on me. Oh, come on. There we go. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Get the ah, didn't get that lance down in time. Okay, we got him this time. Oh, come on. Oh, did I get him or the... Oh, I got the horse again. Okay, well, in theory, I should be faster on the horse than he is running around. But the problem is that, you know, that damn lance, it takes so long for it to get... Back in a couch position. Oh, she's actually, uh. She might actually win this. I'm gonna have to get serious here. It's all about stopping suddenly, spinning around. And... Oh, she's still around. I can't believe it. She's probably got a little sliver of health left. Unfortunately, she's not, she doesn't get wounded or anything. So she's full strength until she's dead. All right, here we go. I think I got her this time. Oh! She's got to be from Tarth. Oh, look at that. Unreal. I think she's all that's standing in between me and immortal fame. All right. By the gods, I'll get her this time. Uh, got her! <laughs> Okay, here we go. Well, that's it. One last round to go. And then I will be the winner of the tourney. Get a big reputation boost. Lots of money. Dinars. Plus, I mean, who doesn't want to win a tournament? I mean, <laughs> I've never won anything. I suck so bad at tests of physical skill. Even in those 
situations where they're like, everybody's a winner, but they'll always be, except for that kid over there. He, no, not him. All right, there we go. I will pat myself on the back. <laughs> and you were here to witness it, by God. That's what makes this even cooler. All right, now I got lots of cash. I can hire some, some pretty cool guys. Instead of just those peasant boys, I can actually get some mercenary troops. Also looking to making some upgrades here, so I'm, I'm doing pretty well for the right out the gate. Now you notice you have slots there for gloves and a hat, and then four weapon slots, and they do take ammo into consideration. So if you want to use a bow, crossbow, you have to have the right kind of ammunition there in one of your slots. And some of the weapons will work with the shield and some won't. I was reading uh, some strategies on this. Some people don't like to have a shield because it slows you down. But I don't know what else you can do when you start to get rained on by arrows. Uh, you can perhaps hide behind your other guys, but you, probably, you know, I would think you probably want a shield. Uh, what do I know, though? Uh, the the two-handed weapons do do more damage. And you know, it also factors in how close they are. So while this, the weapons with a big pole... They're really great if the enemies are far away, but if you get in real close, you might not be able to do any damage with those. So you probably want to have a mix of uh, long-range and short-range weapons. One thing that seems to be conspicuously absent is my lance! Oh, I will not be doing lots of lancing, at least in the early phases of the game. You'll, you know, having that lance can make the difference on the battlefield. You can be up against an uh, army twice your size, and if you're really good with that lance, <laughs> you can pretty much single-handedly take out the, you know, half of their guys, at least all the ones on horseback. And you just, you want a lance, trust me. Fortunately, I don't have one yet. Okay. Well, let's see, what can I buy? Ah, the horse. I'm still kind of stinging from my horsey experience from that Tales of Illyria debacle. But I still, I still go with my instinct that you can't go wrong with putting money into a better horse. And get rid of that old nag. There we go. Look at that. He looks good, doesn't he? That can't wait to ride that thing. All right, get rid of all my garbage. <laughs> Rocks. <laughs> and you know the sad thing is I can actually kill you with those rocks. You get enough of those guys throwing rocks at you. It's nice to hire these mercenaries because they come to the table with some experience points and not those, those peasant recruits that are pretty much are useless until they've been trained. Now here's the, the castle. Sometimes they'll have some nobles in the castle you can talk to. This is actually the king, King Harless. You can uh, try to make offer him your sword right away. I want to go the mercenary option. I went the mercenary route this, this time and eventually he'll ask you, invite you to be a vassal. So I decided, uh, you know, maybe it's better to wait and let him come to you. It's just the way it is in real life. You don't want to appear to be too needy. And these are these, uh, you know, what you would call them, people that feel that they've uh, their throne has been usurped or they feel like they're the rightful heir of some other kingdom. And apparently, I haven't ever played it this way, but you can side with one of these folks and help them retake their kingdom. But I don't know about you, but I don't want to help somebody else become the king. I, I want to be the king. But uh, I guess this might be another way to play the game. You know, possibilities, possibilities. The pearled one. <laughs> I'm not even going to get into the Freudian implications there. Anyway, there's a lot of depth to this game. A lot of text you can read. It's not all just hack and slash, by no means. But I kind of want to get back to some hack and slash. Let's get the hell out of here. So let's go see if we can find those bandits. Oh, there's some more looters. Come here, looter looters. Surrender or die. <laughs> I like my character. I mean, wouldn't it be great just to walk up to somebody and say, Surrender or die. Instantly appear upon a horse with a sword in your hand, army at your back. I get used to this lifestyle, I mean. There's something to be said for that medieval sociopathic lifestyle. There we go. <laughs> you didn't have any chain mail. Oh, I just love that sound. Yeah, that sound. Oh, never gets old. <laughs> I made the exact same mouse gesture about three 
probably about 13,000 times now, and I swear to God, every time I hear that that sound, it just makes it all worth it. <laughs> you know, some people think video games inspire real-life violence, but I've got to say, I've been playing this game now for, I don't know how many hours, probably a hundred. I've only killed five people. All right, now we're done. We are done. Done, 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 done. Get some more loots. Now, unfortunately, the loot you get from these looters, ironically, is uh, not that great. I think professional looters would have some really good stuff, but nope. It's crap. All right, and besides that, those are not the looters that we were looking for. I think we might want to recruit a couple more troops. We can actually have up to about 50, I think, even at the beginning. But as I said, don't be fooled thinking just because you've got a lot of troops means you're going to kick some butt. <laughs> These are untrained farmer farm boys at the moment. They will eventually get better, but for now, they just need to stay behind the guy that's doing all the killing. Learn from my example. Oh, yeah, I forgot. You gotta feed your troops. If you don't feed them, if you don't have food in your inventory, uh, you don't have to manually feed them, they'll, they'll take what they want. But uh, if you don't have any food in your inventory, then they'll start to lose morale. There's lots of uh, little details, like if you get the chicken or the pork, various other foods, I some food will actually start to rot on you. So on the one hand, it's usually better than in that they give, it gives a bigger morale boost. On well, the downside, you know, a couple days and it's, uh, you know, pretty rancid. Okay, back. Let's go update our merchant. The Merchant of Prevon. Oh, that's another sound you come to love. Okay, now he wants us to go hunt down the bandits. And by the way, the, these quests that he's given you are things you'll be doing over and over. Haha, <laughs> Deshavi. Here's one of the heroes we can recruit, and I really like this character, this uh, Deshavi here. She reminds me of uh, uh, the lady on the second Conan movie, yeah, especially when she's in her bikini, which <laughs> you actually get to see. <laughs> okay, yeah, you can read the backstories. You gotta be careful, again, you don't want to just hire everybody you come across, because some of the personalities conflict, and some of them will get all bitchy just because you're looting and pillaging. You know, some some of them don't like the other for various reasons. And, uh, again, sometimes it's worth to find the ones that have noble birth, as long as they're not too snobby. Yeah, there there are some snobby nobles in the game, and I just would prefer not to play with them. But uh, the cool thing is, if they if they're nobles, then later on you can actually give them fiefs, and they can be your vassals. And that's pretty cool, I think. Okay, just looking at some of the options here. We need to get this, uh, we need to hunt down a <laughs> Pooter the Pauper. <laughs> Pootar the Pauper. <laughs> ah, here he is. Okay, we found the robbers. Uh, did you bring the ransom? No, but I brought steel. <laughs> Another great line. Yeah, I love the writing in this game. It's, it's, it's pretty snappy. It's always fun to look back at your guys and see how far they've come along. They're all still running at this point. <laughs> Eventually they'll have their own horses. Or crossbows or bows, depending on how you, you want to outfit your army. And it is quite possible to give them orders. You can have the archers man a heal, or your lancers stay back, and so on and so forth. I think the best strategy is just to get in there and do it yourself. Hopefully you won't even... Hopefully you have the... <laughs> the guy's dead before that army shows up. But if you start to get wounded, you can always run back there and run behind them and let them finish them off. Okay, one more of these and then we'll move on. Oh, I missed. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, we'll uh, skip ahead here. Go to the bandit lair. Now, one thing you can do to speed up the training process is to go to these training fields. And basically what you have to do is fight your own men. Not to the death, of course, but it's actually very tough. But if you are patient with it, you can actually speed up the training quite a bit. I thought I'd show you Deshavi's. <laughs> now doesn't she look like the lady from Conan? 
hits him. She should have got the stick. Oh, oh this is so difficult. So what you want to do with this is block at the right times and then see where they have an opening. If you time it just right, you can take on four guys without even getting a scratch. But man, that takes some skill. Also, of course, helps if you have good athleticism for running and you have the skill. See that, you know what I was saying at the start of the video, though, with the when you're practicing, you don't necessarily know what weapon you'll have. So just because you're really good with a pole arm, well, they might stick you with a, a one arm or even a dagger or a big uh, two handed sword. So it helps to, you know, spread out your skill points, have a little bit of skill with any, t any type of weapon because you don't necessarily know what you're going to be wielding. All right, here is the bandit hideout. Now, these are a bit tricky. I mean, the bandits, they're pretty easy to dispatch. Actually kind of fun to dispatch. But the problem is they tend to be like zits and just pop up where you least want them to. Usually when you're just about to kill one, you know, two, two or three more might appear right next to him. And the fastest way to get killed in this game is to get two or three guys on you all at once. As long as it's one, one at a time, you're probably fine. Yep, you see, see that guy just popped up out of nowhere? I guess they weren't quite skilled enough with the programming to have them open up the door and come out. Instead, they just pop out. Okay, where's the other one? You don't have a radar <laughs> or waypoints or big flashing arrows like, There's bad guys over here, Tommy! Instead, you can actually just look at your guys and see what they're heading for. Because somehow they just seem to be psychically aware. So basically, short of it is, if you don't know where to go, just look at your guy, see where they're running. Chances are that's where the bad guys are. Uh-oh. <laughs> My guys are throwing rocks! <laughs> oh! God, I gotta get back to that training field. This is embarrassing. Oh, you think you're bad with those rocks? Here we go. <laughs> ah, it just never gets old! God, I, you know, I would slap somebody that doesn't like this game. Oh, here we go. Oh, I almost killed the brother. <laughs> oh, uh, you, you guys didn't. I hope you were, were, not, were not watching at that particular moment. Okay. All right, get some more loot. And again, this is just crappy crap, crap, crap. You know, to really get anything good, you have to loot a village or take on a, a noble's army. But, you know, something's better than nothing, I guess. And we can always sell this stuff. Upgrade my troops. And it costs money to upgrade, so you don't want to blow all your, your cash. And the heroes actually level up just like you do, so you can decide, design a, or, um, uh, designate the skill points where they should go. Also give them better gear, even better weapons, and they can become quite powerful and be some of your, your best killers, so you definitely don't want to just ignore that part of the game. I thought I would scoot forward a bit here and show you what one of the sieges look like. So this is a lot further into the game. As you can see, i got much better gear now also have a couple different armies on my side. I agreed to be the King Harlow's or Harfalls or whatever his name is, Vassal. And we've, we're taking on this town together and you pretty much have to if you got it on the normal difficulty because there's huge garrison. You know, eventually you'll be able to do it on your own. But not at this point of the game. So the main thing I want to do here is just work on my archery. I'm not really doing that much damage. Basically this is remote acupuncture at this point, but every time I connect with an arrow, I get a little bit more proficiency. And then later on, I can upgrade my bow, get some more power draw. And now uh, you can actually one-shot guys with headshots. You hit them right in the head. With a crossbow, too, you can do the one-shotting. It's not that useful. I mean, you kill them a lot quicker, more efficiently with your melee weapons. At least I do, but you don't want to just be sitting around here just taking, taking fire, right? I'll be able to take out a couple archers. Now yeah, with the improved proficiency also it gets easier to aim. And you can hold the shot for longer before it starts to wobble, so... Now don't, don't think that uh, bows suck just because the first time you use it, <laughs> it's, it's like this. And eventually it gets much, much better. You know, the crossbows are pretty cool too because you, can, uh, you don't have to have any strength to hold them, to hold it back. Just uh, you aim and it'll, it'll stay there as long as you need it to. With the archer, with the bows, you have to time it a little more precision. Okay, the siege engine is down. 
it magically rolled into place. You know, they said there was no magic in this game, so how did that siege engine roll forward? But I guess we won't think too hard about that. Now here's where it gets really challenging. There are just troops everywhere, and I'm trying to get into what I call my hacking position. You can sort of worm your way just at the right angle. Oops, I didn't quite pull it off that time, but sometimes you can get yourself a position just right, and then you can just hack and hack and hack and hack and take down literally hundreds of men without any danger to yourself, but unfortunately it's uh, also possible to get in a position like this. Now I'm doing okay right now, but you never know when the reinforcements might show up and suddenly you've got a hundred guys right behind you. So you want to be as quick as you can with this and keep, make sure you've got an escape route planned. But it doesn't get much more fun than this. <laughs> I mean, wow. And uh, this is right that I still don't have my two-handed skills up and my strength up enough where I can just literally just one-shot in everything. But eventually you do get that powerful. It's a great way to relax, just hacking thousands of men to death. Alright, so my biggest fear here is that uh, either reinforcements are going to pop up where I don't want them to, or I'm going to get peppered to death with arrows. Because if, if this character goes down, if your character dies, it's basically retreat time. And that just always sucks. Pretty much worth the reload, in my opinion, if that happens. And also, some of the castles and town scenes, there, there are actually more levels after this. You might have to go inside and defeat some troops on the interior. And you don't restore your health in between those. So, take a lot of damage here, down to like a sliver, and you'll die in one of those second or third rounds. And you still don't take the town, so... You really have to watch yourself. Don't do anything too foolish, but, uh... <laughs> I'm gonna do something foolish! <laughs> Let's sneak around here and see if we can come up behind them. Now, the AI, I've got it down to average. So he's not a genius. So sometimes you can just get behind the ranks there, and they don't necessarily target you out. So let's see if I can do a little archery work here. Really what i found, the best way you can win these battles is to find out where your guys are fighting and try to help them out, try to free them up to do other things. Because what will happen eventually, if you let your, all your guys die, then suddenly you've got 50, 60 guys all coming at you. And that's a horrible feeling. So you don't want to let your, leave you guys in the lurch. There we go. Nice precision work. Have an arrow up the arse. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I, I, I would hate to get hit with an arrow. I, mean, I think that would pretty much just bum me out for the whole day to have this arrow sticking out of me, but I guess these guys don't mind that much. There we go. You notice I just picked up these arrows and bow on the ground. Sometimes you can do that. Unfortunately, uh, some of the bows and arrows require different skills. You might not have them, so you won't always be able to replenish your supply, but it's always cool when you do. All right, I'm out, so let's go back up top and get the trusty <laughs> sword back out. <laughs> Man, thing is pretty bloody by now. Yeah, you know, they say every good sword should have a name. I think I'll call mine Brock. All right, Brock, come on, man. I see some guys up there that are in desperate need of some government health care. Oh, so I thought I would skip forward to show you some of the better mounted combat. I got my lance now. And you really be able to see what you can do with this thing. Oh, get out of my ah. You really be able to see what this thing's capable of when you don't have one of your trusty knights get right in front of your lance. Okay, here we go. Spot of bing. I just want to get a little bit of momentum going with this horse and just kill, 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 kill. It's like shish kebabs. Makes that nice little sound when you get it right. And I'm, you know what? That's just such an attractive logo. Oh my god, I just... Oh, I didn't quite kill him. See, you do have to get a bit of a forward momentum going. It's really nice when they're running away from you, because they got that big... that big target area known as their back. If they're facing you, they have a... really disconcerting habit of putting their shield up and blocking your lance. If I wanted people blocking my lance, I'd just go to the club. Right, let's see what else we can do. 
Again, really, you, you know, you can do a little charging damage, you can knock them down. So partly what I'm trying to do here is, is kill as many as I can, but also I'm, I'm trying to find where they're attacking my troops and get them off of them. Now, for one thing, it really sucks. You want to keep your casualties as low as possible, especially on your advanced troops. It really sucks. I mean, you, who cares if you win a battle if you lost all your knights? This will take forever to replace, so... You know, don't just go off on your own. Always be looking back at your, at your army and seeing how and where you can be of the most service. Another thing you'll probably notice is the nice desert landscape. Quite a bit of variety. You're not always just in the same climate. There's different kinds of uh, weather, night and day. Lots of ways to keep it interesting. And we've won yet again. Oh, and this time I took uh, this noble hostage. So I'll be able to ransom him for a tidy little profit. All in all, very successful day's work. And another cool perk is that the other vassals will, and the king will be impressed. I've taken out this noble's army. So that'll be good for me. Man, what an attractive shield. Okay, turban, turban, turban. Not very valuable, but you can always sell it. Oh, and somebody leveled up, and it was me. <laughs> Okay, so this will give you some idea of the variety of missions you can get. Now what I'm trying to do here is bust somebody out of prison. So I had to disguise myself and fight a little battle to get to this point. But now I'm trying to slip through this uh, end of this prison here and rescue a hostage. Okay, I guess it will not let me... <laughs> not let me damage him without initiating combat. Let's see who's... Yep, there's the guy I'm supposed to rescue. I need permission. <laughs> yeah, I brought my permission right here. Uh, I'm stuck with a stupid stick for a weapon. I'm horrible with this quarter staff. And these guys are fully armored, so this, is, this might actually be pretty tough. I think I'm just hoping I can uh, pick up one of their weapons as soon as possible here. I guess I'm stuck with a quarter staff since I had to slip in, slip inside the town. Maybe they confiscated my weapon. Okay, let's see if I can. Oh, these guys aren't armored, so that shouldn't be that bad. Oh, just a little sliver of health though. Oh, can he do it? Can he do it? Roar! He so bravely roared as he backed away. Oh, he's out. <laughs> Beaten with a stick. Oh man, see if I'd have brought a banana, I would be unstoppable. There we go, there we go. That's more like it. Flanged mace. I'm okay with the phasered mace, I don't really like the flanged. Okay, I don't see any more enemies. I guess that guy's not going to attack me. So let's slip in there and see if we can rescue the king, or the count. This is pretty cool. This is the first time I've done this particular mission. I guess I just go in here. Yep, door to the dungeon. Ah, uh, the dungeon. Spent many a good year of my life in a dungeon. Count Clargus! Oh, okay, so I got... You have the option of, uh, if he can come with you, you probably get a little bit less honor that way if he has to fight alongside you, but I don't care. I'd rather be alive than have a few extra rep points. I wonder what all they're going to make us fight. Tell you one thing, I am really, really glad. Of, oh, look at him! He's, that's not fair! Why, he gets to wear all his armor? Well, I guess I got mine too somehow. <laughs> okay, there's a lack of, uh, lack of consistency there, or continuity there, but we'll just ignore that. Oh, much easier now that I have a saber. Actually, I think I got my trusty two-handed sword. Yeah, Barack! Okay, I guess we just go out the front door. Could it be this easy? Oh, there's those damned arrows. Those are my nemesis. Arrows, now you can do a little zigzag thing and sometimes that'll, eh, see it doesn't always work. But as long as it's just one guy, you can kind of zigzag him. But you get, you know, five or six guys shooting arrows and I mean, you're pretty much, you're pretty much toast. Yeah. Now, he ought to be my friend for life after all that. 
Okay, one last thing I'll show you is the romantic stuff. You know, it took me longer to capture this girl's heart than it did the kingdom. Anyway, here is how it works. So this is a little bit into the process. I've already initiated the, uh, the, the matrimony matrimonial proceedings by talking to her dad. Basically said he would be okay with uh, me courting her. Like to cement an alliance with me. That's how you get the ball rolling. Now, um, I've met with her once before. Nothing much happened. But she asked me to come back and see her, so I'll take that as a positive sign. <laughs> so basically what happens is that she'll ever, you know, periodically she'll say, I want to see you. So you go and drag your entire army across the continent just to come here and click on her. <laughs> oh, happy, happy, happy. Yeah, that's about it. You do this repeatedly. You can speed the process up by learning some poems. Assuming that she likes the poem. Let's uh, take a look at that. Alright, so here I've actually spent the time to learn the poem. Let's try it out on her. It takes 300 gold to learn these too. Storming the fortress of love. It's nothing of passion. Oh, everybody's a critic. Well, that didn't go so well. Let's try, try it again. This time I didn't bother with that troubadour fella. I got straight to the source, Barry White. I'm going to try out these lyrics. Ah, I'm here, Lady Tibble. Do you like poetry? Of course she likes poetry. A heart's desire? Oh, so beautiful. <laughs> hey, there we go. <laughs> now we're in there. Okay, just have to get the Count's permission, and we are wed. Be right back. All right. How much is this going to cost me? Where is he? Count Cleus. Yes, I've got a question for you. I've been looking at your daughter. How much did she cost? Yeah. Uh, splendid news, my young man. The two of us must jump up. up. Oh, we get to the... Oh, my God! 15,740 dinars? Aye, aye. This is too realistic. Okay, I'll skip forward six hours later when I finally got the cash. Man, I hope you guys appreciate all the trouble I went to for this video. I mean, I didn't go to this much trouble to marry my actual wife. All right, okay, here's the money. God, ugh, it's pain. Oh, oh that, that was... I guess you could say a burden has been lifted. Okay, now we can finally move on to the actual wedding. I thought I would leave this part in just to give you some appreciation <laughs> for what's involved in this. I mean, when I talk about having to trek across the continent, I'm not just clicking a the button. There's no teleporters, crystals, or anything. Eh? You have to actually sit there and look at your army. Slowly move across the battlefield. Now, I know you can speed this up with pathfinding, but... You know, who's got the points to spare for that? So anyway, I thought we could sing some songs while we were on our way. I know this great little poem or two. I guess we can kind of do that. Meanwhile, your army's just eating you out of house and home. It's a good thing you've got plenty of cash. Oh! Uh, still got two bags of grain. <laughs> uh, I guess I have to stock up. Come on. I wish you could just take these guys through the drive-thru, man. This is... Oh, of course. No food. Gotta go to town. Everything's closed in Ushkuru. You guys getting an, a, feel, a feel yet for what I had to go through? Meanwhile, you know, I can't protect my village. It's being pillaged. Ransacked. So much for my fife. I mean, we got... Little Lady Tybalt to deal with. Okay. Bartering there. I'm not trying to drag this out, mind you. <laughs> Actually, I am. You're going to. <laughs> You're probably skipping forward, man, you bastard. Okay, let's just get out of here. We've done all we can. Now keep forward to Tybalt Castle. 
It'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. <laughs> you know, by the way, this uh, composer really outdid himself on this. Just lovely music all the way through. I'll tell you his name here. I've got plenty of time to look it up as we head toward the castle. <laughs> I'll save it just in case I don't want to marry her. Cheaper than a divorce. Uh, Jesse Hopkins. The composer of this. Uh, doesn't sound very Turkish, but maybe he's not. Okay, where is she? Lady Tibble. How wonderful it is. In a short while, we shall be married. <laughs> yeah, it's not the ceremony I'm looking forward to. Okay, uh, let's see. What am I supposed to do to kick this thing into motion here? Gosh. Man, I'm gonna be so pissed off if I have to go on another big, big run. Oh, we have this epic quest to procure the wedding cake tapas. Oh, Sog <laughs> achievements. <laughs> man, I earned that achievement, man. That is. Whew. Aww. I take it all back. It was all worth it. <gasps> wow. Why are these guys making these weird motions? <laughs> the dude's like, ooh. <laughs> You're supposed to have a big grin on your face, man. Okay. Well, this is nice. This is just some lame screen. Pops up. You're married now. Good luck with that. Now see, the really cool thing is uh, now I can hold feasts and I get a big boost in my reputation and people take me a lot more seriously. Fade to white. That's just classy. Well, there you go, folks. Uh, there's a lot more to this game, but I mean, we could go on for another two or three hours. I mean, it's really just that deep. Not perfect. I mean, there's definitely some flaws, uh, some things I could have done better, but, you know, it's just little bitty nitpicky stuff. It's not even really worth going into, uh... I'd just say if you like the idea of combining action games or really uh, fun action-based combat, and I'm not even a you know you know me guys, I prefer the turn-based strategy stuff. But uh, this they just do it so well here; it's actually a lot of fun. I don't mind, <laughs> I actually like it. Uh, but if you want to combine that and have a you know a decent role-playing element, great uh, strategic element, you know all that, and then all these little fun side activities like getting married and all that stuff. It's, really just combines into a very nice package. It's a very, very fun game. Unfortunately, it's not, at least uh, as of this video, as far as I can tell anyway, not not on GOG. It is on Steam for a pretty reasonable price, so you can pick it up there, but uh, I'll leave you to it. Anyway, Mountain Blade uh, Warband. Great game. I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts on this and the other ones. Uh, if you got the time, just post them here in the YouTube comments. Thank you. And that's all for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Should be back next week with a new interview series with a chiptune composer named uh, Yerzhmi. So stay tuned for that. Should be quite interesting. As always, I want to thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting me on Patreon, PayPal, or however you choose to. Really means a lot to me, guys. Really does make a difference. And uh, as you probably know, we have Google Air Hangouts uh, every month with uh, Patreon supporters. And just thought I'd let you know that uh, last um, last week we actually met with uh, Becky uh, Berger Heinemann, a special guest that showed up. Uh, it was really fantastic. Uh, congrats to all the guys that made that uh, Google Air Hangout. And if you want to uh, be part of that, just uh, support me on Patreon at any level, and you receive the invites for those. There's also a an audio podcast, too, that's uh, only available to the Patreon supporters. So thank you. Thank you very much. All right, got some other news. Uh, Shane Stack showed in about a total conversion mod for the Temple of Elemental Evil game. You may, may remember that one. Uh, shipped, uh, shall we say, less than in a complete shape. Well, this uh, conversion mod promises a lot of uh, new bells and whistles. Looks really fantastic. It's supposedly uh, more thoughtful uh, than the original game. I don't know about that, but... Uh, you know, it's too new. I don't really I haven't played it myself yet, but from all that I've read and seen, it looks pretty good. So you might want to check into that. Uh, also... 
Uh, if you're anything like me, you've been losing a lot of time to the original Sin game uh, from the Divinity guys. They've published this. I've, I've played that thing pretty much nonstop, you know, every chance I've gotten. I want to do a match hat on it soon. If you haven't picked it up yet, you really should. I think it's at 40 bucks right now. <laughs> well worth it. Uh, you know, my opinions may change as I play the game more, but as of now, it's probably the most fun I've had since the original Baldur's Gate. So really... Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not saying I would put it on that same pedestal yet, but it's uh, about as close uh, to that experience, that level of excitement that I've had in a very long time. Uh, let's see, other news. Uh, Tom Phelps has written in. I thought this was uh, worth sharing with you. He was uh, just watched episode 245 of uh, where I uh, looked at Wizardry. Wait a minute. I think he's talking about the original Wizardry game, actually. Uh, but anyway, uh, he says uh, that it may have struck you as strange that text is displayed every other column. This is because the Pascal runtime that Wizardry uses was developed before 80 column uh, cards. Oh, I guess he's talking about the uh, interview I did with uh, Robert Sirotech. When run on the Apple II and used at the time of Wizardry, Wizardry's release, the text is 40 columns and looks much better, although still all caps. The clips of wizardry in your shows can be made more historically authentic by removing or disabling the 80 column support from the emulator that you're using. May you empty more drinking horns. <laughs> so that's uh, pretty interesting. Uh, so I guess when I was uh, when I showed those wizardry 2 clips, I had it in 80 column mode. It did look a little little, little weird, so I might take his advice. So anyway, thank you, Tom, for that. Anyone that's interested in playing a wizardry should uh, consider setting that uh, column limit to 40. All right, anything else? I think that will do it for the news. All right, so what about that ale of the week? Uh, well, this week I've got a Central Waters Brewing Company Illumination Double India Pale Ale. Uh, they don't have a lot of information about it, unfortunately. Oh, there's some. <laughs> it says I'm criticizing them for not having the info. It shows up right here. A walloping double IPA illumination is immensely bitter, yet unfathomably well-balanced, copious amounts of Centennial, Chinook, Simcoe hops give it a citrusy mouthful of pineapple and mango, nicely roasted with toasty malts. Here's to all you hop heads. Now, I do not see, however, anything about the level of alcohol. Uh, I'd assume it'd be pretty high since they called it a double IPA, but I could be wrong. I thought it'd be kind of fun for me just to taste it and try to guess, and then you guys can look it up uh, later and let me know if I got anywhere in the ballpark. Anyway, let's get this open and see what it's all about. All right, so I got some of this Illumination double IPA here in the rather excellent drinking horn. I've been snorting it, as you can probably tell. It smells pretty good. I'm not really smelling anything too interesting here. Kind of what you would expect from an IPA. You, know, you can smell the hops. You can tell it's probably going to be rather bitter, like they said on the bottle. But anyway, let's give it a taste. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> it's going, oh. Hmm. Uh, you get whammoed with this uh, really bitter taste, but it goes away, and then it's replaced by... Sort of like a cinnamon roll, like a Danish roll. Like, <laughs> I know you probably think I'm crazy, but it's a, it kind of goes from this sharply bitter to this super sweet and cinnamony uh, like flavor. It's really interesting. Let me try it again. Yeah, I just haven't tasted anything quite like that before. You sort of start off with this like cherry uh, liquor or cough syrup like flavor, and then that goes away, and then you get this sort of light and sweet cinnamon like uh, roll, cinnamon roll like flavor to it. I uh, really quite, uh, you know, I haven't tasted anything quite like this before. Um, very tasty, actually. I'll try it one more time. <laughs> ah. Yeah, the bitterness really gets to you, but then thankfully goes away really quickly, and you get the, uh, the sweet-like uh, flavor to it. A really, really uh, interesting, almost bizarre uh, <laughs> drink here, uh, Illumination. Uh, I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5 drinking horns just, in, just for novelty alone. I haven't tasted anything quite like this. It's, uh, dare I say unique among the IPAs I've tried. Now, I wanted to try to guess the alcohol content, since I, I don't know, I promise. So I'm just going to uh, guess... Uh, that it's around 8%, maybe 8.5% alcohol. Uh, so you guys can check me on that. Let me know how close I got. But anyway, really good. So four out of five drinking horns on this. Highly recommend it.
All right, so I wanted to end up with a, a wrap up with a quotation about marriage. And I found one from that distinguished marriage counselor, Mr. Rodney Dangerfield. It goes something like this. A good wife always forgives her husband when she's wrong. See you guys next week. I'm sorry. Is there anything I can do to make up for it? Hmm. Let me think. You could always buy me a penny leg. <laughs>